Mark chapter number 4. And we're going to be, be looking in the latter verses. We'll begin in verse number uh, 35. I've come to find out this, that all the Bible's about Jesus. It don't matter if you turn to Genesis or if you turn to Revelation. It's all about him. As a matter of fact, uh, we find that this is the object Christ is the object of these of, of the lessons that he gives to his disciples. I'm glad I'm one of his disciples. Hope you are. Verse number 35 says, And the same day when the even was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there also was with him other little ships. Verse number 37 says, And there rose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? I'm just going to stop and say this. He cares. Amen. Oh, yes, he cares. I'm glad he cares. Verse number 39 says, And he arose and rebuked the wind, and he said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? And so here's uh, the thought I have this morning. What manner of man is this? And uh, the disciples found themselves in great peril. Have you ever found yourself in peril? All you have to do is cry on him. He's in the ship. And uh, I, 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 we read this. It said there were other also with them other little ships. I think these are vessels. And I'm a vessel. You're a vessel. And so little little ships do this. We're just little. And uh, the, nothing big about you, nothing big about me, but there is something big about him. Yeah. And so, uh, again, my thought is, what manner of man is this? We first see in verse 35, it says, And the same day when the even was come. So Jesus had been doing some things that day. That's not unusual, is it? Jesus is always doing something. I said this before. Uh, when we're down to nothing, he's up to something. And so that's amazing. He's an amazing kind of God. And so we see first the time. And it says the same day, it was the same day, and he said, let us go. Let us pass over to the other side. He said, we're going over. And uh, some things had taken place that day. He had taught. He had preached. He had dealt with friends. He had dealt with foes. Probably some demons too. And so Jesus was tired. He was worn out. You ever find yourself just worn down? I mean, worn, frazzled out. And yet uh, Jesus said to these fellas, we're going to the other side, get in the ship. And he does it at night. Isn't that amazing? Uh, you say, why does he do it at night? I, I think he he's going to spend the daytime. They're going to gather to get an arrow. And, and there, uh, there's a man in great need. It's only about six miles across where they're going. We say only six miles, uh, but we travel in a van. It goes 65, 70, 75, 80. Uh, somebody said, what does your, ch your children drive by uh, under the law? I said, no, they drive under grace. <laughs> and uh, God is gracious, isn't he? And uh, so we find some great truths here. Uh, Jesus is, uh, he, he said, we're going to the other side. Six miles across, there's somebody over there that needs me. I need him too, don't you? I need him greatly. So we find uh, the time, I, and then there's the trip. He has a proposal. In verse 35, he said, uh, we're going to the other side. So, so uh, he knew where he was headed. I, I I seldom really know where I'm going. They just tell me, get in, hang on, shut up, sit down. They don't say shut up. <laughs> Might as well, though. 
And uh, so uh, Jesus made this proposal. He said, we're going to the other side. I, I, well, I'm going to the other side, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, won't that be a glorious day when we see all of heaven and all its splendor and all of its might and all its beauty? Uh, and uh, you say, well, what, what you gonna, what you going to look for first? I'm going to look for him, the one who let me come there. I, you say, are you sure you're going? I am sure, sure, positively sure. You say, you're that sure? I'm sure in that. Uh, you say, I'm not going because of who I am. I'm going because of who he is. Right. And so if you're here today and you don't, you don't, you're not really sure, you just hope you're going, oh, there's only one way to get there. And Jesus said, I'm the way. Jesus said, I'm the truth. Jesus said, I'm the life. And no man goeth to the Father but by me. And so uh, that's the reason I'm headed there. It's not because I, I, I sing. It's not because I preach. It, as a matter of fact, uh, you can do a lot of things on your own strength. You can preach in your own strength. I have before. Uh, yeah, don't look at me like that. I've done some more things in my own strength. But I found out they're useless. Absolutely useless. You can do a lot of things. You can praise the Lord in your own strength. You can lift up hands in your own strength. You can do all things in your own strength. There's some things you can't do in your own strength. You can't worship in your own strength. Uh, I mean, worship is, is that which is comes from within us unto him. Hey, unto him alone. And so uh, there's a proposal. Uh, and then there's a preparation. It tells us that and when they had sent away the multitude, they were preparing uh for the crowd to go home. Listen, I, I love people, don't you? Jesus loved people. But I've always said uh, people's always been the problem. Yeah. Jesus so loved the world. And uh, I, I'm, I tell you the truth, I'm glad when my grandchildren come. But I'm glad when they leave too. <laughs> <laughs> you say, that sounds funny. Well, it, it feels funny when they when they come, amen. And uh, and so um, uh, when when the multitude had come, uh, and by the way, uh, Jesus had compassion on the multitude. Jesus had compassion on me. And I, and you look at me, and I'm just a people. I'm looking at you. You're just a people. Uh, but uh, uh, it says, and they took him even as he was in the ship. Uh, someone said this. They said uh, he was. Uh, he came. To change people. That's why I came. Listen, you. Uh, I, I heard one fellow pray, and he said, "Lord, I have your will." He said, "I got up and I said, well, God, if you have your will, that means I can't have mine." That's pretty big, isn't it? And uh, and they took him even as he was. Let me say this: He's the same yesterday. He's the same today, and he's the same forever. I, and so his purpose. Uh, was that he had changed them. If you if you're not changed, you're not one of his. Right. And that's what that's what he he came and they took him uh, as he was. How was he? He was the same as he always been. That's one thing I can say about Jesus. That preacher said that about me, but I changed. Sometimes I'm mean as a snake. But you know what? Jesus is never mean. He's never. Hey, he's always kind. He's always compassionate, and uh, uh, and and compassion uh, cannot compete with meanness. Hey, they not going they not going to stay in the same ship together, and so uh, Jesus came for a reason, uh, and he saw the crowd. But then we see the Christ uh, in in First John uh, one through seven. I, I'm going to read those verses if I can find it. First John one. 1 through 7 says this, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard and which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of life. That's, that's what Christ was. He was the word of life. Verse 2 says, this is parenthetical. He says, For the life is manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show it unto you that enter uh, that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. I, you know what? That, I don't blame Peter for saying to John, you ask him. 
John, John uh, realized who he was. Uh, that which we have seen and we have heard declare we unto you, that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. That's the Christ. He, he was a... Uh, this, this is why they're so amazed. Uh, they, they knew who he was. He was their friend. It's, it's good to have God as a friend, but it's better to have him as a Savior. And verse number four says, And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. We say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness. We lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is, uh, as he is the light, in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. I'm glad I'm clean. I'm glad you're clean. Hey, the only reason you're clean today is because of the blood of Jesus. It's not because of who I am. It's not because of who you are. You could be a preacher. And, and by the way, I am. That's where I get my authority is through Christ. And uh, he said, uh, this is the Christ. This is the true Christ. And so they're looking to him. In verse again, let's, let's read this in verse 36. It says, they took him as he was in the ship. And uh, in this little postscript, he says, and there were with him also little ships. I already mentioned that. I, there's got to be a message there somewhere. I mean, the Lord just don't put it in there. He's put it in with a purpose, a reason, a plan. He, he's got a plan for your life. Hey, he's got a plan for my life. And you know what that plan is? I can tell it to you right now. It's to follow him. He knows what's best. He knows when it's good. He knows when it's clear. You say it's rain outside. Well, that's all right too. He knows how to stop the rain. Or he knows how to get more rain. Whatever's needed. So, so we see the trip. Uh, God had a plan. Uh, he had preparation. And then we see the tempest. This wasn't just a storm. This was a great storm. It says in verse 37, there rose a great storm of wind. I, I don't really know uh, much, but I do know this, that a great storm comes once in a while. Uh, we, we were in, a, we were in um, the, the inside, the end part of Tennessee sometime back. I believe a tornado touched down. I said, what did you do? I slept. I said, he's awake and he's watching after stuff. Ain't no need for me to stay up and worry about it. That's, that's the way it is. Hey, hey, he'll take care of stuff. If I'd have gone to heaven, I'd have been all right too. You say, how, how, uh, how does that work? Like this. Uh, a great storm came. And it, it, it was just not an ordinary storm. It was a great storm. Now, uh, these these fellows they had let Jesus on board, uh, and they believed this, and and you can believe this too. They they had uh, worked. Some of them had worked all their life as fishermen. They knew the ins and the outs of that water. They knew every. Uh, I don't know how you say that in Kentucky, but I'd say every nook and cranny, and uh, they they knew where they was at, and they 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 were amazed that Jesus. Uh, was with them. Aren't you amazed? That sometimes it just amazes me. I, I, I'm amazed at who God is and what God's doing. Uh, and it said this was a great storm, and it arose. And sometimes they uh, storms. They tell me storms on that body of water just come out of nowhere. Uh, it's just it can be a pretty day, and all of a sudden there's a storm. Sort of sounds like your life, doesn't it? I mean, we just going along, and everything seems to be going good. All of a sudden there's a storm. And it's a, and sometimes it's a great one. Sometimes it's a little one. By the way, it doesn't matter if it's great or if it's little. God can take care of it. Yeah. It said the waves beating the ship so that it was now full. Now, uh, I don't know about uh, you, but what happens when a ship fills up with water? It sinks. I mean, it goes down. But Jesus is not, he's not worried about it. He's no pillow. One fellow asked me, he said, do you think that pillow floated? I don't think it did. 
I, I think uh, uh, that Jesus was in the same peril as these guys were in. Except he wasn't in peril. He said, we're going to the other side. He already told him that in verse 35. Listen again. He said, let us pass over to the other side. He knew his time had not come. You remember at the wedding of Cana of Galilee? He said, uh, he said to Mary, she said, do something. He said, my time's not yet. What was he talking about? I think he was talking about his death. Uh, it was, it's appointed unto men. Hey, listen, God knows when you're going to die. I like what one preacher said years ago. I heard him say this. He said, uh, um, he, he said, uh, statistics point out that one out of one people die. I mean, he, it's just the way it is. is you're going to die. And, uh, and God knows when it's going to be. I don't know. I'm glad I don't know. Aren't you glad you don't know when you're going to die? I don't know what I'd do. I, 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 I guess, <laughs> but uh, God knows exactly when it's when going to happen and how it's going to happen. What's going to take place? Maybe in a car wreck? Maybe natural death? What is natural? Well, my mom was 93 years old. She cut down in the flower of her youth. <laughs> she said, I'd love to just lay down one night and wake up in heaven. That'd be all right, wouldn't it? That's pretty much what she did. She sat down in the chair, and the, the doctor said she had a massive stroke and died. She had taken care of all of her business. She she knew what was going on around her. And uh, I, I, so, that may not be your case. My pastor was a great man. He had a great mind, but he died with Alzheimer's. Uh, I, I knew some other preachers that had great minds, but they died with Alzheimer's. Why did they do that? That's well, because that's what God wanted. That's what God planned. That's what God purposed. Uh, my pastor um, pastored the same church. I don't know how long your pastor's been here, but he had been at the same church 30 years, and he retired and uh, said, I'm, I'm going to preach all over the place. Well, it wasn't six months till he couldn't even preach. That's, that's what happens sometimes, and God knew that. Uh, it was a great storm for him, but for God, it was just what God planned. And uh, these fellows said there's a great storm wind. Waves beating the ship, so it's now full. And uh, so we see the storm. In verse 38, we see the state, the Savior. It says, And he was in the hinder part of the ship, sleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and they said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? I, I, I said this earlier. I'm going to say it again. Jesus cares. Uh, he, matter of fact, the Bible tells us precious is the death of the, in the sight of the Lord. So uh, one day I, I'm going to die. I'm going to perish, but, but not today. You say, how you know not today? Because I'm right here. He, he's a set, he set this up. He said, we're going to have revival. That's what he told us. He said, we're going to have revival. And uh, one, day, one day I won't, but today I am. And uh, he said, care us not that we perish. And so we, we see... Uh, that the say that they were concerned, the Savior was concerned, and uh, he he was he's so concerned he's asleep. I think it points out his great humanity. Did you know this? Jesus was man, hundred percent. He feels he knows what you're going through. He knows what it's like to be tempted. You ever been tempted? Sure you have. I'll answer that for you. Sure you have. And uh, and and have you ever failed? Sure you have. You're going to fail. Um, but God knows how, to, how you can overcome it. You, do you have any little pet sins that just keep bothering you? I mean, just keep coming up and keep coming up and keep coming up. The Lord knows how to take care of those. And, uh, and so we see the Savior. Uh, here's a tempest, a storm, and in the midst of the storm, a Savior. I'm glad he knows what you're going through. He knows exactly where your heart is. Uh, he knows what's going on in your life. He knows all about you. There's a tempest, the trip, the time. And then we see transformation. Verse 39 says, He arose and he rebuked the wind. And he said to the sea. That's amazing, isn't it? He rebuked the wind. You know why he rebuked the wind? Because the wind's what was causing the waves. The wind, as a matter of fact, if you, if you go, it may be a little deeper than that. 
and and I can't get very deep. <laughs> I can get about ankle deep. That's about it. But I I think this is demonic. Matter of fact, uh, you're going through uh, uh, spiritual trials. This is spiritual warfare, Amen. and we don't even we can't even see it. Isn't that amazing? We, this is warfare that we can't even see. Uh, where's your sword? It's right here. Where's your Where's your shield? It's faith. And so he said, uh, "There rose uh, he arose. He rebuked the wind, uh, and he said to the sea, Peace be still. Here was a raging great storm. Right. All of a sudden, it's transformed into a, into a, from a lion to a kitty cat. Yeah, right. that's, that's, how, that's how we describe it. It was a roaring lion. Matter of fact, Satan's a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour. Right. He's, he's after you. Right. He's right. after me. Right. And, uh, and if he catches me, or if he catches you, he catches Christ. And uh, I like what one preacher said. He said, I'm in the hand of the Lord. And uh, and if he gets to me, he's got to get through Christ. And if he gets through Christ, he'd be saved. Yeah. That'd be a saved devil. Yeah. He said, it can't happen. No, it can't happen. He, he's, a, he's an angel. He's a fallen angel. The angels can't be saved. But you can. Yeah. Isn't, that, isn't that amazing that, that God made a way of escape? And... Um, and a transformation. He said there, uh, he rebuked it and, and he said to the wind, peace, be still. He's spoken it to my heart many times, hasn't it yours? Yeah. Peace, peace, peace. Uh, I, I made this, I mentioned this earlier. He he is a, uh, he's a peace speaker. Yeah. If, you, if you're going through times of great trouble and trial, he'll give you peace. And, and then he says, uh, uh, in this storm, he rebuked it. I, and we see the sailors. Verse 40 said, and he said to them, why are you so fearful? Now, how is it that you have no faith? You know what I found out? I found out you can't have faith. You can't have fear and faith together. It just don't work. you you got to trust something. As a matter of fact, uh, many times we put our trust in objects, don't we? Uh, preacher, you you swim across the water, flew. Trust the pilot. That's an object. Uh, uh, there's a lot of things we trust. We trust the bank. How many's got some money in the bank? I got a little, <laughs> but I still trust the banker. You say I, I asked him one time. I said. Are y'all are y'all solid? Are y'all solid? He, and she said yes. The next day, another bank bought them out. She said I didn't even know it. So it, we put our trust in the bank, don't we? We put our trust in objects, and yet many times we fail to trust God like that. If you can, if you can trust people, can't you trust God? He's worthy. Hey, He's worth it. And uh, he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? They were afraid. You ever been afraid? And that's because you don't have you don't have faith. That's what he asked these fellows. He said, Don't you have faith? They had faith in the ship. That's why they went out in it. You ever been out in a boat? I trust the boat wasn't going to sink. I still put on a life jacket though. <laughs> He said, why are you so fearful? How is it you have no faith? Where, where Do you have faith today? And I mean, I'm talking about faith in the Lord. He'll take care of everything. Uh, we, we, we worry about... I, I, my wife's got this sticker on the refrigerator. Y'all put magnets on your refrigerator? Got this sticker on there that says, I know, I know where he works because 90% of the things I worry about never happen. That's about right, isn't it? We worry about stuff that don't make any, that don't don't amount to anything. Uh, but these fellows, they they were afraid, and and then uh, we see their the transformation. Then we see their terror, uh, the reality of it. Uh, that's what he was talking about. He said, and they feared exceedingly. Uh, and then he said, uh, uh, what manner of man is this? Which one of the disciples said that? 
Who do you think said that? Don't tell us, does it? I've said that, though, haven't you? What manner of man is this? He's calmed my fears again. Yeah. Faith is, is, is upon him. And so uh, there, there are many storms we face. We face storms of sorrow. We face storms of doubt. We face storms of, of worry, of anxiety. And and uh, and these fellows, you, I, I think the reason that they ask this question, what manner of man is this, is because the, the winds and the waves did exactly as he told them. Right. Right. I, I mean, just uh, immediately. You know, that's how you got saved. Yeah. You, did, you didn't decide, well, I'll get saved in a month. Yeah. Lord, save me in a month. That's not what we prayed. We prayed, Lord, save me, and it was instantaneous. Yeah. Uh, I, I've been to some churches where uh, folks were glad they was lost. But I'm glad I'm saved. Yeah. I'm glad I was lost, but I'm glad I'm saved now. Yeah. It, I, didn't, I didn't get saved. I had to get lost first, yeah. but I got saved and lost all together. Yeah. That's how God, uh, he spoke to my heart. And uh, and there was a reason uh, that they feared. There was a reason uh, that they said this thing, that even the wind and the sea obey him. That's an amazing thing that the wind and the seas obey the Lord. They will. And he, he spoke to them, and, and uh, they asked this question, what manner of man is this? Peter said, John, you ask him. So uh, I, it doesn't tell us who asked the question, but I think they were all asking it. I think they all thought this. So we're here today and we're thinking things. So uh, I, I don't really know. I, I'm, I'm not the best. Uh, how do they say it? I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Uh, but at least I'm in the drawer. <laughs> and uh, they some. I don't know a lot of stuff. But I do know this, that Jesus saved me. Amen. I'm glad to be saved. Amen. I'm glad I'm going to leave here and I'll be excited about what God's done. Why? Because uh, what manner of man is this? Who is he? He's the king of all glory. And he, he saw me. That's amazing. That has always amazed me. It's still amazing me. The grace of God's an amazing thing. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.